God bless you. morning. We've been going through this series called Jesus Period, and this is our second week, and we've been focusing on the book of Colossians. And uh, I know if you've been a Christian for quite some time, you've encountered the book of Colossians, and it's one of the letters of Paul, and that has been, has, that has been our focus uh, since last week. No? But before I go on to the preaching, let me remind us, since this year, 2024, is, is our 40th year. As a church, we would like to, as a spiritual family across the nation, we'll have a, have a, a time of celebration on June. And it's actually our victory conference. So you have to pick which date will work for you. 27, Thursday, or 28, Friday. Okay, But I would like us, especially if you've been called to be part of this church, this is your spiritual family, uh, lumago yung faith mo dito, now you have some relationships here in this church and you, you consider yourself as a member of this church, then I want to encourage you to sign up for our Victory Conference. No, meron pa palang hanggang May, first week of May, it's, there's an early bird rate, okay? 1,450. Pag lumampas kayo dun sa deadline na yon, 5,000 na. No, it's actually 1,6. But, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the first week of May, it's, um, it's an early bird rate. So join us. If you're a student, um, you have to pick Thursday ka ba or Friday. Kasi it's just, so there will be three conferences. Uh, Thursday and then Friday afternoon. And then the Friday evening is the campus conference. Yun yung, it's the same feel, but younger. Okay. Doon tayo, mga seniors. Doon tayo sa Friday night, di ba? So, join us in our Mo Arena. So, we've been talking about Jesus' period. Early on, when the church, Victory Church, was starting, we did not have any sophisticated or uh, lavish buildings yet. We, they rented a small space in, ba- in a basement, uh, part of the building in University Belt, and there's another space there that they rented as a church in Makati. And then gradually it expanded. But early on, if you remember, some of you who were there attended our service in Victory. Naalala ba yung acetate? Yung... There's no PowerPoint. It's just a projector, overhead projector. And then kita yung finger mo. Okay, whoever, and if your finger's chubby, then it's also seen, and then you change the lyrics, and it's an overhead projector. So during those times, when it's a time, it's an overhead projector era, there's a, there's a banner at the side or at the stage, in front of the stage, that says, Jesus period. It's not even the victory logo. It was just a banner that says, Jesus period. And it was a reminder for that small church that ultimately, it's all about Jesus. Ultimately, it's for, from, and by, and through Jesus. They weren't exalting or promoting a church brand. They were promoting and praising the name of Jesus. And the reason why we entitled that series, Jesus Spirit Now, is because it's a good reminder for our church that even if we're considered as a mega church, and some are against a mega church, that no matter how big we get, a good reminder is that it's all about Jesus. That when you live your life throughout the week and this year, and when, you're, when people see you and changed life, they'll say, they won't say, Taga Victory Gano. They won't say, maybe you attend that church in Beach. No, it's not about that. They'll say, this man or woman is living for Jesus. 
And that's what we want. And the question I want to ask us today is, what do you think are two possible reasons why Christians drift away from God? Alam niyo ba yung term na backslide? Now, that's more a familiar term. Have you ever met someone who backslid and never came back? But what do you think are two possible reasons? And there are, there are many. There are actually many reasons why Christians who were on fire for God eventually drifted away, turned away from God. I'm going to focus on two possible reasons that's related to my text that can eventually cause us to turn and drift away from God. And as your pastor here in the 8 a.m., that's my hope that you'll have a great start but a greater finish. How many of you are in faith? You're, you're worshiping, you're serving, you're walking with Jesus today. But how many of you believe even in your deathbed, people will say, oh, this man is, and woman has been on fire for God. How many of you believe that we'll have a greater finish, right? And that's my hope for us as 8 a.m. congregation, that it's not just having a good, or you might have a terrible start, but you'll have a greater finish. But there are two possible reasons why sometimes Christians can drift away from their, our faith. That I'm going to focus on two. There are a lot. There are a lot of reasons. When you look at the scriptures and when you study life, what I'm going to focus on two. Number one is this. It's the issue of complacency. When pandemic came, 2020, March, and the whole nation was in lockdown because of COVID, our schedules have been disrupted. We got used or had a hard time staying in our houses. There were people, all of us, we've, we got reoriented in attending church and attending discipleship group meetings via Zoom. I never discovered Zoom until March 2020. Meron palang ganun. And I, we thought it was going to be two weeks, three weeks, four months, and then four months became a year, and then a year became another year, turned to another year, and then all in all, it was like three years. Our routines in life have been disrupted. To us, Church, during those three years, to some of us, to some of us, I'm not generalizing it, church service was sitting on a sofa and watching it in the LED TV. To some of us, church service was cooking adobo and making sure the rice is prepared while you're listening to Pastor Patrick preaching. And then, of course, you're not really fully Uh, attentive, and then you'll ask your son, Ano daw? <laughs> Discipleship to some of us has been like only 30 minutes. And so, but the problem is that after three years, when we approach post pandemic, unfortunately, there are some who had a hard time pivoting from doing the things of God comfortably at home to pivoting again because the world is open. I know a few who never recovered from those three-year routine. And when I ask them, life is normal, church is still sitting on the sofa, watching it on their laptop, watching it from their big screens. And whatever they don't want to do on Sunday, they'll do. And if I ask them, how, 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 how's your small group? They've lost touch with the people from church. Unfortunately, complacency crept in. The challenge for us when we become seen, I'm not talking about seniors, ah. I'm talking about, hindi ako nakatingin. Wala akong tinitingnan. When a challenge for us, when I talk about seniors, seasoned Christians, is that we get so comfortable at some point 
That when we get so comfortable that Christianity has become a comfort zone, it has become routine, you get stuck in a rut. Eventually, you become complacent. That can be the number one. That's what the first reason I want to focus on today, church. That eventually, we drift away from God when we are in a place of complacency. Alam mo yun, yung feeling mo hindi ka na grow You feel like, oh, this is it for me. And Christianity has been boring. There's nothing that can stir me up or excite me even more. I get stuck in a place of complacency. If you've been a Christian for two months, wala pa yan. You're not part of the, I'm not talking about you. Enjoy your relationship with God. If it's like two years, okay, man. But when we're talking about five, ten years, fifteen years, you know the Bible. You finished the Bible from Genesis to Revelation for many times now. You've been attending church. You know what to do. You know what's going to happen. Pastor Brandel will do the call to worship and then sing songs and then Pastor Brandel again and then rich offering and then this handsome pastor will preach and then after that, dismiss. And then, you know, it has been a routine. And then from Mondays to Saturdays, I read about it's routine. You get stuck in a rut, but sometimes you get in a place of complacency. I use the example of people who just came from the lockdown, approaching in post-pandemic now, they are stuck in a place of complacency. Am I talking about everyone? No, I'm talking about some. Kaya when you ask them, nasan ka na? Eto, sa bahay lang. Pero makikita mo sa MOA. Makikita mo sa IKEA. They're very active. But when it comes to the things of God, they became complacent. The second reason is that it can be possible that I compartmentalize Christ. Christ is just part of my Sunday schedule. After 8 a.m., and if the pastor is over time, 9.30, pag pray mo ngayon, in Jesus' name, 9.15, tapos tayo. I go to my work. Some of you go to your work, to your workplaces after or tomorrow. Christ is no longer there. Compartmentalize. Sino po dito OC? Organize to the point na, okay, Monday, ito yung susuting kong shirt. Next day, ito. Okay? Compartmentalize. Planners. Parang Marie Kondo. You know what I'm talking about? But sometimes there are people na Christ is just part of their Sunday schedule and they leave Christ here in this building and they live lives pursuing all the things they want to pursue without Jesus. Yung po yung inasabi kong compartmentalize. Is Christ just a schedule to you? These are the two possible reasons that I'm pounding on that will, if you're here, eventually you'll drift away from God. It's going to be short-lived for us. Hindi po ako galit, smile lang. And that's what we want to talk about today. As your pastor here in the 8 a.m., I don't want us to be here to be complacent. And I don't want us to be in what we call compartmentalizing Christ. Because yung kinanta natin kanina, di ba, Pastor Brandel? Ano yung sinabi? Gusto ko yung kanta niyo na yung last song. Have all of... So not, comp- not compartment. Christ, have all of me. Not just, not just my Sunday 8 a.m. to 9.30. Christ, have all of my schedule. Christ, have all of my work. Christ, have all and be involved in my social relationships in my in everything that I do. That's what Apostle Paul was saying in Colossians chapter 2. How do we overcome this? So that you and I, including myself, will not drift away from God. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 6, and he's encouraging the Christians in Colossae, Apostle Paul was saying, therefore, pag sinabi mong therefore, in light of you surrendering your life to Christ, that's what Apostle Paul is saying, just as you received Jesus when you became born again, in light of moving forward, what does it say? So, 
So, walk in Him. So, pag sinabi kong compartmentalize, schedule lang siya, correct? But you know, each day is a walk, correct? I know you have cars. But when you're living each day, you're walking in this life. So what Apostle Paul is saying, just be, when you sur- surrender your life to Christ, hindi lang ibig sabihin, you have a ticket to heaven and you're waiting to die, at least you're sure in heaven. No, while you're living today, since you surrendered your life to Jesus, you are walking this life with Him. So that means now, hindi siya compartment. That means now, lahat ng ginagawa mo from Sunday 9.30 to Saturday 11.59 p.m., he's involved. It's interesting that when you look at the Greek word of walk, it's walking means conforming to the likeness of Christ. Wow, that's a difficult question. It's a difficult question even to ask. When I ask myself and you assess yourself, sige, each and every day, ang pwede mong tanungin, are you being conformed to the likeness of Jesus? Oops. Hindi ko matanong sa wife ko eh. Honey, matatanong mo ba kay Lini yan? Lalo na pag nag-away lang kayo. Han, mukha ba si Jesus? Am I being conformed to the likeness of Jesus? When you go to your office, when you, you do your business, do they see you conforming to the likeness of Christ? That's what Apostle Paul was encouraging the Christians in Colossae. Because you are Christians, you receive Jesus. They need to see Jesus. Ngayon, kung schedule lang si Jesus, mahirapan tayo dyan. If it's just part of your routine on Sunday, compartmentalized Christian, and you leave Jesus in this building, and then start living your life the way you want to live, Well, they have, I'm sure people will have a hard time seeing Jesus in your life. But what Apostle Paul is saying, continue to walk this life always in mind, in heart, Jesus being involved in the way you live your life each and every day, 24-7. How do we do that? How do we do that? Well, in verse 7, sabi nga, rooted and built up in Him. So, if you want to walk this life conforming to the likeness of Christ, nagbabago ka ba? <laughs> Yun yung magandang question. Oh, sige, wag, palit, let's change ka. To the foreigners, ano bang English nung ka? K. Okay. Ka is you. So, to the foreigners, the question is, are you being transformed to the likeness of Christ each and every day? So, that's in that's the English translation. So let's change the pronoun or you. Is it a pronoun? No. You is, let's change you to me. So it becomes more personal. So the question does not sound judgmental, but it's more of self-assessment. Am I conforming to the likeness of Christ? But the key is I need to be rooted and built up in Him. You know, we went to school. So we're familiar with a plant. A healthy plant has healthy roots. Agree? A plant will not survive without a root. Well, you can buy something like a f- in a furniture store, but it's not real. It's artificial. A real organic thriving plant has a root, has roots, and it's so connected to the soil. Anong function ng root? Absorbs. It doesn't just hold on to the soil to make sure the plant or the tree will not fall. It absorbs the nutrients from the soil. Correct? Some of you are teachers here. Some of you cut class, but I'm sure this is easy. 
the root is there to absorb. So the root enables the plant to be enriched and grow. Apostle Paul used this picture and analogy so that when you're a Christian, your life should be rooted in Christ. So during the week, you have to ask yourself, where do you get source of wisdom? Where do you get wisdom? What's, what's your source? Where do you get strength each and every day? Who's you're the source of, your, of, of, uh, of power to be able to live a godly life? In short, kanino ka connected? Where is your life connected? Who is it connected to? Kasi nga, that's the problem. If the problem is it's compartmentalized and it's just a schedule, it's going to be hard to be connected to Jesus because you leave Jesus here in this building. But if I live my life in each and every day and my life is rooted in Christ, that means He's the source of everything. So the question is, marami na akong question, is Christ the source of everything? Is Christ the source of everything? Is your life rooted in Him so that when it rains and there are storms, it wiggles, it shakes, but you're not uprooted? That's what it means to be, to walk in Him. So now, let me address the issue of complacency. Okay? So kanina, ina-address ko na yung compartmentalization. Gets na natin yun. You understand that? Now, the issue of complacency is this. The issue of complacency is you think everything is just a byproduct. There's no effort. But when I study the scripture, bearing fruit on one hand, is a byproduct. Alam mo yung minsan, I've heard pastors and I say that too. Nakakita ka na ba ng, sa Victory Weekend, nakakita ka na ba ng tree na umiire para mag bear fruit? That's, no, that's disgusting, right? Now, have you seen a tree that forces its way to bear fruit? No, it's natural. So on one hand, there's a picture of bearing fruit, natural. Thumbs up? Agree. But there's also an aspect I've realized. Huh? Oh, okay. There's an aspect of tilling, working it, pruning. That bearing fruit is hard and difficult. It's not a natural byproduct at times. Sometimes with the help of the Spirit, you have to work on it. Sino dito meron kayong mga struggles <clears throat> and you really, by the grace of God, of course, it's the power of God, but you really worked it out. You were, you made sure that you set boundaries. Pinagtrabahuan mo. You set boundaries. And then you've, you made sure there were accountability partners that you have. And you made sure that there's discipline. So merong aspect of bearing fruit that's natural and easy, but there's also an aspect when it comes to our journey and our faith in God that it takes, it would take work. The pruning, the cutting off of the things that displease God, it takes a lot of work. It's difficult at times. The problem with complacency is we get so lazy. Oh, na, Christian na ako. Eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we go to heaven. And that's fatalism. It's like living a life without purpose. So rooted, being rooted, rooted pa lang tayo. Kaya si Pastor Brandel may class na rooted. Punta kayo doon kung gusto nyo maging malalim sa Bible. Ako, mababaw eh. So, Wednesday, this Wednesday. Anong pag-usapan nyo? Holy Spirit, patay na. Yeah. Ayos na yan. But that's, when you talk about being rooted, it's not just natural. If you want to be rooted in Christ, 
hey man, there, there are things you'd have to surrender. There are things you'd have to work on and remove some hindrances in your life to be able that you're rooted in Him. To the seasoned Christians here, you know what I'm talking about. Walking with Jesus is always not a natural byproduct. Who says reading the Bible is natural? <laughs> there are nights, Miss Lini, when I talk to my daughters. Okay, Lucy or Caroline, who wants to pray? Caroline will say, no, I don't like. It's not natural. Doing the things of God is not natural. There are times it's, kahit nga yung mga matagal ng Kristiyano, sino dito tinatamad magbasa ng Bible? Siyempre, walang magre-raise ng hands. Kasi mas sipag tayo sa 8 a.m. eh. Now, who among you, you know what I'm talking about? Sometimes going to church, you feel lethargic. Or fellowshipping and attending a small group of times. You know, eto na naman, makikita ako na naman siya. You know what I'm talking about? So it's not natural. So root, being rooted in Him takes discipline and work as well. So agree ako that sometimes it's a natural byproduct. There are things in we've experienced that it's natural. It's, an, it's easy. It was easy. But there are things that the Lord is dealing in our lives today that's not easy. And it would take, with the help of the Holy Spirit and you, working together to be able to remove those things in your life. Rooted and built. Yung built up, rooted and growing. And established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. So when you're rooted in Christ, Christ becomes the source of everything. Your life is enriched. Okay? But as you grow, sometimes it's painful. <laughs> if you have children, you know, sometimes yung pag tumubo yung wisdom tooth or molar, they get sick at times. You know what I'm talking about? Because part of growth is there's pain. Have you noticed? It's not a natural byproduct. Sometimes it's there are times it's painful. But it's still a good thing because you're growing, right? I remember um, yesterday, there were two people who corrected me. How many of you here love correction? Okay? You say, correct me pa. It's tough, right? Two people corrected me yesterday. One was Pastor Paulo. So he talked to me this yesterday afternoon and he told me some things and just the feedback. And I said, okay, but in my mind, feeling mo lang yun, diba? <laughs> Sabihin niyo sa 11, yan yan, dyan kasi yan, kita kasi sabong mo. <clears throat> Sabi mo, sinabi ko sa kayo. So he corrected me. You know, when a disciple, someone who's more mature, corrects you. You know, the flesh, right? Sometimes it's hard to accept. But you know, there's a, a truth to that. And so he corrected me and then he said, oh, and I said, okay. But in my mind, I was processing it. I have a choice whether to accept it or not. To accept it with humility or with reject it with pride. But maybe, minsan siguro, ginagamit din siya ni Lord, paminsan-minsan. <laughs> and so I had to accept. And then last night, my wife and I had a peaceful, yan, nakita niya na yung gesture ko, peaceful. We're still in one piece. A peaceful negotiation. And she had to address something also which she has been addressing for many years. Wow. The patience of a wife. But those people yesterday, the Lord used to reveal things in my life that were not pleasing to Him. But that process was painful. 
growth is not easy. Growing in the Lord is not easy. There are times it would be painful and will require hard work. But you will not stumble and fall because you're rooted in Christ. Kaya ibig sabihin, growing in Christ. When I am walking in Christ, what Paul is saying, that means I am rooted in Christ. He's the source of everything, not just in case of emergency. Ayan, meron, I feel in my spirit, I have to tell this to some of you. Some of you treat Jesus as break glass in case of emergency. And that's the reason you're here. Okay, gentle Patrick, gentle. But he's not break glass in case of emergency. Jesus, how many of you believe Jesus is the source of everything? Whether in good times or in bad times. That's rooted in Christ. Growing in Christ. So ang question ngayon is, if Jesus period is not just a mantra of victory, it should be our mantra. Is Jesus period Question mark. Is Jesus the only one? For Him, from Him, through Him, by Him. Is He that in your life? I need to grow. Some, from time to time, some Christians, new Christians approach me. Pastor, you hirap maging Christian? When I wasn't a Christian, I keep, Satan did not have to approach me. I just kept saying yes, even from his, while he's afar, okay na, gagawin ko na. But now, since there are temptations, I have to reject and say no. It's hard. And then there's issues at home. And then issues in, in other, in my work. Parang, when I became a Christian pastor, it, life got worse. How many of you can relate to what I'm saying? When you were a resident of hell, life was smooth. It's a resident of hell. Oh, sige, diplomatic natin. When you were a child of Satan, life was smooth. <laughs> but now when you're a child of God, life became harder, got harder. But let me tell you, let me encourage all of us, when life becomes hard, when serving Jesus, that means you're growing in Him. God is doing things. He's removing things. He's pruning things. Your growth. Iba talaga yung Upside kingdom talaga yung teachings ni Jesus. It's very countercultural to the world. In this world, you will have many troubles, but take heart, He has overcome the world. That's what Jesus is saying. And you're growing in Him. And so this year may be, may be painful for some of us. We're growing. Any doctors here? See Doc Jem Bandido? Any quack doctor? <laughs> doctor quack quack, wala? <laughs> doctor, doctoran. Doctors will say, when a person gets, has fever, that means the person is healthy. You know what I'm, you know that? Do you guys know that? That when you're sick, when you have fever from time to time, that means you have a healthy immune system. Be, why? Because the good bacteria the antibodies are battling the, the germs, whatever germs there, whatever virus. And so the reason why your, your, your temperature mo is high compared to normal, because that means the bacteria is fighting whatever the harmful bacteria is in your body. Yeah, for two or three days, you're sick. But sickness is a sign of good health. That means you have a good immune system because after a few days, you get better again. You know, I'm telling you also, I'm using that analogy because when you're struggling as a Christian, having a hard time saying yes to the temptation, you have, no, saying no. <laughs> but well, that's weird, having a, no, But you're having a hard time. There's struggle in, within. You know what I'm talking about? It's like you're, you have a fever. 
Well, let me tell you, that means the Holy Spirit is working in your life. You're growing in in it. So, kaya yung struggle ko yung pag mo sabihin, temptations, come on! I'm not talking about that. And I'm just saying that whenever you encounter that, if there's any consolation to what I'm what we're going through, let me tell you, you're growing in Christ. That's what it means to walk in Him. And then the third one is secure in Christ. Sabi kasi, firmly established. You're secure in Christ because you're, He's the source of everything and thus He's the source of everything. You're growing, you're being enriched with a lot of things from and through Him, by Him, for Him. And then you're secure. It's like a tree that's pl- securely planted. That no matter how many typhoons have come, it's still there. And that's Apostle Paul's encouragement to the Christians in Colossae. That no matter what storms, well, in the Colossians, it was a, a, an issue of false teachings. No matter how many winds of false teachings or storms, personal crises you go through, as long as you're rooted and growing in Christ, you'll be secure in Him. I'm believing 8 a.m. whatever we go through, personally, as a church, because of serving Jesus, I'm believing all of us will stand strong in Him. Amen? We'll, we'll not run away. We'll not backslide. Hindi tutupi in Tagalog. We'll not shrink back, but we'll stand firm because we're deeply rooted in Jesus. The past three nights, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we had a memorial service for our beloved Bishop Ferdi Kabiling. Some of you attended, some of you watched online. Um, I attended again the last night, which was in Victory Center in Robinson's Galleria. And it was uh, a Friday night in... That was the last memorial service. So I, I attended. The last part of the memorial service was when his wife stood up, Miss Judy. And Judy stood up. Then he, then she just spoke. She, we knew and it was obvious that she was grieving because the loss of her husband was sudden. She said, she still wakes up in the middle of the night the same time when she received the news that her husband died. She still wakes up. She's grieving and she's mourning. But I can also sense her security in Jesus. I can sense that she's strong. She was grieving, she was sad, but she was filled with hope. And if you see, look at her posts the past days, all of the things that she's been posting were just people from the church community and all the people who visited. And she said something, thank you for the church community. Without you, I wouldn't be standing. I wouldn't be able to carry this weight. I was talking to my wife yesterday. Every day naman nag ko ng wife ko. And we talked about it. Sabi ko, grabe so I had, I was able to ask the daughter, see El. So El, do you, El is married already, has two kids. I had to ask El, El, so for this season, ba, you'll be staying in your mom's house first? Sabi ni El, no. Her mom doesn't like. So right now, her mom is in her house with John Philip, their son, while mourning and grieving. Hey, usually, di ba, lahat ng ako, you know, talking about yung multo. You know, okay, okay. I'm a, you know, Filipino. But you know, to, to, <laughs> to soften the, the loss, right? The grieving in the morning. Usually, you're all together. But the fact that Miss Judy's staying there with two helpers and and her son. It's like, wow. She's strong. And I can't help but share that story because when I step, talked about rooted, growing, and secure in Christ, that no matter how painful the situation is, 
she's secure in Jesus. She's so secure in Jesus, even if she's mourning. And that's what my wife said. You know, sabi nga, I feel like Miss Judy is really strong. Not because of her personality. It's really just because of her faith in Jesus. She's just so strong. And you know, in her eulogy, she said it. She's grieving, but she's grieving with hope. And then she said, she started thanking God for all the things he has done in the life of, his, of her husband. That even when her husband was discovered in the gas station, because in the cardiac arrest is a car, the gas boy that the Lord used, who's anonymous, approached the car and the car was unlocked for some reason. And they discovered Bishop Ferdy there. And then from there, the gas boy helped bring Bishop Ferdy to the hospital. Sabi ni Miss Judy, he's, she's just thankful that even to the smallest detail of how the Lord orchestrated everything that her husband will be taken care of even at the time of his death. And that good Samaritan will bring him to the hospital. That alone was how he, she saw how the Lord faithfully took care of Bishop Ferdy from the time he was born up to the time when he was taken away by God. And he was, she was just abounding in thanksgiving. You know, that's what Apostle Paul said. That as you are rooted in Christ, you're growing in Christ, you're secure in Christ, it will result to abounding me as a pastor. And it's a privilege to be able to pastor you because you're abounding in thanksgiving. Let's all stand today. I'm going to go back and just think about those three. Rooted in Christ. Growing in Christ. Secure in Christ. So you leave this place, remember that. Don't just leave Jesus here. Involve Him in every area of your life this week. No matter what the situations you go through, you're secure in Him as long as you're abiding in Him and growing in Christ. Some of you, I sense you're struggling. I mean, young, young walking with Jesus is hard. You're struggling. But you know, let me encourage you, all of us, it's part of growth. And at the end of the day, it's all worth it. To live for me, to die is gain. To live is through Christ. Bow down your heads. Father God, I pray for these precious people here in the 8 a.m. Every man, every woman, every young person, every old person, Lord, thank you. Every family that's represented here. God, may we abound in thanksgiving just amazing. I remember last year, it seemed like during the worship time, people are, there's no passion and fire. But the way you transform this congregation, amazing. They're just, this is just a congregation that lifts up your name and just growing and abounding in thanksgiving. May you continue to root all of us in you. May we continue to grow. May we continue to be firmly established, God. Because at the end of the day, it's all about you. Victory will not be famous in our lives. That's not the goal. No, you will be famous in our lives. The person of Christ will be discovered in each one of us as we live for you, God, for your glory and for your honor. Bless my brothers and my sisters. May your righteousness, your peace, and your joy be with us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. We'll see you next week. Have a good week.
dark of the night, this fate is sure. The light of the morning will shine, I will endure. All to live is Christ. I obey.